guys welcome back to my channel it is Wednesday and I'm here tonight to do another video for you guys I uh, decided to go ahead and get this video done tonight probably won't get up to you until Thursday hopefully I'll get it up by Thursday I haven't been feeling my best but I'm gonna try to get this video up to you guys uh, I have been having some real sit down very serious conversations and so I wanted to lighten it up a little bit today but although I'm gonna have a little fun with this video. I think it's still gonna be something that'll be beneficial for you guys. So today's video is gonna be the 10 things all women, it might be 11, but I'm gonna say 10. I think 10 things all women should stop doing. And it may be a little funny, you know, at times, um, but yeah, we're gonna see how this work out. <laughs> all right. The 10 things that these are my opinion. This is mine. Let me give you a disclaimer. These are my opinion. This is not something that is written in stone or any doctor or anybody has said. This is just stuff that Lydia came up with at her age because it's things that I actually have stopped doing. So with that being said, let's get started. <laughs> okay, it's not in any, any order either. It's just random. So we're going to start with the first one I put down here. And that is body bashing. Guys, you know that we can bash our bodies. We're always very critical of the way that we look. You know, we're not happy with it. And sometimes we're not happy with it and we're not doing anything about it. So if you're not doing anything about it, you need to quit bashing yourself. Stop talking about how fat you are, you know, how your stomach uh, looks like a muffin top or even worse, I've heard worse things than that, you know, or how you don't like your double chin and all of these different things like that. And if it's not something that you're going to try to take a, make a conscious effort to work on, then stop body bashing yourself. I'm going to have to put my readers on so I can see, guys, because y'all know I have bad eyes. So let me put this on. Okay, number two is comparing yourself to another woman. Y'all know we always looking at somebody else, especially when it comes to the celebrities, you know, like... Beyonce and the Halle Berry's of the world and the J-Lo's of the world and the Kim Kardashian's of the world. We're always comparing ourselves to that. And let me tell y'all something. Do y'all not know that those ladies paid a lot of money to look like that? They, they didn't come out the womb that way. Now, I'm not saying these women are not attractive or anything like that. I think all of them are very beautiful women. But trust me when I say that when you're in that type of uh, life, and you're wealthy like they are, you can purchase just about anything you need. So that means if you want to remove a wrinkle, you can do that. If you want to lift the tootie, you can do that. If you want to lift the boo-boo, the boobs up here, you can do that as well. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Makeup and the knife will get you just about anything you want. So we got to stop comparing ourselves, not only with celebrities, sometimes we do it with our siblings, with our friends, just random people. We're comparing ourselves. We are all uniquely made individuals, so it's a good thing. Embrace who you are and love it, okay? The, the third thing that I put up here is wearing heels every day. Now, I'm gonna tell you something, guys. When I was young, I used to wear high heel shoes all the time. I mean, every day, I could walk all day long, eight, nine, 12 hours in heels. But as I've gotten older, my feet is saying, really? <laughs> and I'm going to give you an idea. And, you know, we have our feet in these shoes all day long. And we think that that's normal or that that's something that we're supposed to do. Guys, our feet are not made that way. Our feet are like this. And we do have an arch in it, but our feet weren't made to be in this position all day. I'm going to show you guys these shoes these were my 50th birthday shoes. I hope y'all can see that. They're beautiful, aren't they? I've kept them all of these years. Well, it's not that many, but these are five and a half inch heels. With the platform, it's probably about six. Beautiful shoes. Like an ombre color. They're like turquoise and purple, and sometimes they look green and blue, but... Think about your feet being in that position all day long and you think you're not gonna have foot troubles. We gotta give our feet a break, ladies. We gotta let our feet rest sometimes. 
we cannot walk around in these types of shoes 24 7. it is not meant to do that it's not meant to do that and actually on my birthday guys i sprung my ankle on my 50th birthday with these shoes on and could not complete the night that evening because i had been had been um drinking a little bit before i left the hotel to go out that evening having some champagne and stuff and was a little bit tipsy came out of the door and the door was closing and i didn't have the key and i was trying to run rush back in to get the key and kind of stumbled a little bit my little equilibrium or whatever was off balance and i fell guys and i was trying to break my fall and i just kept running and fell guys and sprung my ankle and it didn't hit me until like an hour later when my foot started swelling so I keep these shoes as a remembrance that these are beautiful and they are probably two hour shoes at best. <laughs> so yeah, so stop wearing high heel shoes every day. Okay, let's see what I had down for number four. That was number three. Number four is trying to be someone you're not. Just chill and be you. You know, it's a lot of times people are putting on, trying to be people they're not, you know, trying to fit in the crowd. So sometimes we we want it, we act a certain way, we talk a certain way, you know, all this slang language. You know, when you reach a certain age, it's okay to just be intelligent. You don't have to know all the the, uh, the latest uh, lingo and and, you know, things that people are saying. You know, I play with my girls sometimes and I'll be... You know, just messing with them just, just to see how they're going to react. And I'll say things like, uh, my girlfriend and I are going out and we're going to get lit. And they be like, mama, no. Mama, no. <laughs> they tell me not to talk that way because, you know, you're looking at this woman who's over 50 years old trying to, you know, talk and be, you know, something that she's not. Just be you. The most attractive thing is a person that is uniquely themselves and just being them. 100% of the time. So let's stop trying to be somebody that we're not. And number five, I have being in a relationship for the sake of having one. You know, um, a lot of times we do that because a lot of people are afraid to be alone and they don't want to uh, you know time to pass and and they don't have anybody so sometimes you'll lower your standards and get with somebody just because that person might find you attractive or you know or he's fun or this or you know they make you laugh or whatever but there's really no real chemistry there so in order to um just have a relationship you'll be in a relationship with them or it could be a situation where there's somebody that's very ugly to you, you know, talk ugly to you, not respectful you know, of you and, and, and treat you like a lady and value you. But you still stay in a relationship for the sake of having a relationship. Just stop that. Just stop that, you know, because of all the time you take being hurt, you might as well deal with the pain or the, the fear of being alone and, um, meet someone down the road that's good for you versus being with somebody that's going to really um, make you feel, you know, worthless. It's not worth that. So, yeah, let's stop that. Holding on to toxic friends is number six. I know a lot of times people, you know, you might know people you've had in your life for a long time, long time, and you feel like they just a fixture, a permanent fixture, and you don't want to let them go. And I understand that attachment. I've had some friends like that. But sometimes it's just best to allow them to go on. That doesn't mean you hate them. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be nice to them when you see them. You know, silver or ask them how they're doing and, you know, how's the family and all of that. But sometimes it's best to separate yourself from that person and not put yourself. Because sometimes people toxic behavior can actually wear on you. You know, you can take it in. You'll start feeling bad about yourself. You'll start taking in those uh, negative vibes and those negative spirits. And it'll bring you down and, you know, have you acting crazy. So it's best sometimes just to separate you, yourself from people who are toxic and 
you know, they have yet to find who they are, find their place in the world. It will be better for you spiritually, emotionally, and physically. That was number let's see. One, two, three, four, five. That was number six. Number seven. Being embarrassed about what you enjoy doing. Now, you guys know I've been telling you all that I've been beading. These are these are some of my beads. Got the little charms. I love beading. And a lot of people might feel like, oh, you're an old lady now. You know, you're a bit doing you're beading. You know, it's okay to be different. It's okay to have hobbies that other people don't have. You know, if it's something that you enjoy doing, do it. Sometimes I like to go to museums. I have girlfriends that don't like to go. You know, they will not go for nothing. You know, they think that that's boring. So they won't go with me. Or, you know, um, I like to go to uh, forums. You know, they have like these little meetups where they're talking about things in the community. And to a lot of people that might be bored because we're not drinking, we're not partying, we're not dancing. You know, I like to educate myself. It's not all about having a good time. I like to, to know about things. I like to learn new stuff. So sometimes I'm going to do things more so that it's going to be educational. Just like when I brought you guys the vlog from when I went to St. Louis and stuff. And we went to see some of the historical sites, you know, like the arch. You know, I didn't even get a lot of views on that video. And which is fine because that's not entertaining to everybody. But it is for me. So just because other people don't like it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing it. You know, it's something that I enjoy doing. So I'm going to continue to do it. So that is, I think, number seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's number seven. Number eight, guys. Holding on to regrets. How many of us have done that? Just regrets. Things that we messed up on when we was younger, um, mistakes we've made in relationships or jobs we've had, you know, just making bad decisions in life and we hold on to it and we relive it over and over and over again. You know, you meet new people and you, and you just keep reliving it and you, whenever you get upset with yourself or you make a mistake, you start beating yourself up and you bring it up again. When you make a mistake, and you forgive yourself for it and you tell yourself you're moving on you got to leave it back there you can't keep bringing it with you you're still dragging this chain to your ankle you're just dragging it and dragging it with you into new relationships and into new situations of your life at some point you got to let it go that is the only way your life is going to prosper because if you keep holding on to things to regrets and the mistakes you will never find that peace of mind or happiness ever because you're going to be constantly looking in a rearview mirror. So we got to stop holding on to regrets. Number nine, worrying about everything being perfect. How many of y'all like that? Just everything, just never happy, Never satisfied with which was you know what you got. It don't matter if somebody tell you that you look nice. You just you just worry about it. You won't accept anybody's um, uh, thoughts about it. You know you just you just constantly constantly worried about it. I'm trying to find I got a little something a little skit I want to play for you guys. Just constantly beating yourself up. And somebody tell you you look fine, you don't believe them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't. Hey. Bring, bring. Hey. Hey, girl, did you get that picture I sent you? Yeah, I got it. What you think about my hair? Oh, it looks fine to me. I don't know if I like that or not. I want to get them curls like, you know, like Beyonce had in it when she was doing the Super Bowl. Okay. I don't know though. I don't know. How's that gonna look on me? Well, I think it'll I look. Know. Maybe I should just get the Holly Berry cut. What do you think? You gonna cut your hair off? Girl, I just don't know, girl. Everybody wearing that style now. Well, maybe it's not for you, but you know. I don't know. Maybe I should just go buy a wig. What you think? 
Uh, well, you ready? I don't know, though, because, you know, they might be able to see my part. Um, you ain't helping me, girl. I'm trying. Look, well, Bob just going to call Angel. Really? How many of us have done that before? It doesn't matter what nobody else says. You're just not going to accept. You're not going to even let them talk. You just got your whole idea of what you think. So you're not listening. It don't matter what nobody says. You're just straight up worrying about trying to be perfect. We all got flaws, guys, you know, or things that we want to fix, things that we wish were better. You know, it's just life. That's just the way life is. So you have to just learn to laugh at yourself, you know, be the best that you can be in whatever you have, you know, and, and that's what makes you different. That's what makes you unique and special. And I think nothing is more beautiful than a woman that's uniquely herself, regardless of what other people think. It doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter the color, you know, just be you. And I think sometimes it comes with growing. When you get older, I think you sort of appreciate yourself and you just live in the moment. You live in who you are. And I think that's great. And number 10, I might do the bonus one, but I'm going to do number 10 is living in the future. How many of us live in the future? You know, the future ain't even here yet, but we living in the future. How many of us do that? Hey. Hey, girl. I was just thinking about you. Girl, let me tell you, I've been sitting up here thinking about when I get married, girl. When oh. I get married, I'm going to tell you, I hope my man has a lot of money. I well, want this big old house. That'd be I'm nice. thinking about it. I want about 5,000 square feet. 5,000? Probably about four bedrooms. Wow. And let me see what else I want, girl. Hon, I'm going to well, get the car I've been wanting all my life. I'm going to have a BMW. No, let me think about that. Because I want that Range Rover, girl. That's what really? I'm going to do. Boy, I can't wait. I just wish I had that right now, girl. Well, I mean, well, it'll come in time. Oh, no, it's just so hard out here. It's hard to meet a guy, but I'm going to keep on looking, well, girl. Because when I get married, it's going to be all the way live, girl. I'll be thinking about it. I'll be thinking about how I'm going to dress. All those trips I'm going to be taking. Girl, we're going to well, land on the beach, honey. I'm going to go to Paris. And where else I want to go, girl? Yeah. I hope you got to the Dominican. Girl, let me think. Let, you know what? Let me take that back, girl. When I get married. We are going to take a cruise around the world, honey. That's what I want to find wow. when I get there, girl. Ooh, Lord, I be thinking about that every day, girl. Girl, uh, what you been doing? Well, you going to listen to what, I'm, <laughs> what I got to say? <laughs> How many of us are like that? Just, you got everything just planned down. And what if it doesn't go that way? What if you don't get that mansion or that luxury car or that guy that has all that money? So what you going to do with your life? You going to sit up and just live in the future like that? We need to embrace every moment that we have. God gives us every day, you know, to love, to experience new things, get out, meet new people, learn something different, guys. This is a big old world out there. You don't have to have all the money in the world to enjoy this world. But a lot of people sit up and they live in the future and they just dream about if they had this and they have that and have this and have that. And they miss out on life and just pass them on by because it's just too busy living in the future. How many of us as women, how many of us do that? I'm not going to say I've never done that before in my life, but I've learned. So we got to stop living in the future. And... My final one, which is number 11, I would, I'm going to call this a bonus one because I said 10. Number 11 is trying to do everything. You know, we wear a lot of hats as women and we know it. we wear lots of hats. Some of us are mothers, single parents, some of us are wives, some of us are caregivers. We take care of our parents or other loved ones. We work outside the home. We're the cook, the maid, we're the taxi driver, we're the bill payer, we're the gardener. We do a lot of different things. We don't have any help. And we're trying to just do every time. Sometimes you have to take a moment and just have some time for yourself. Those things are going to be there. And if you run yourself in the ground trying to do everything, you're going to break down your health, your mental stability, and you're not going to be good for anybody. So we just got to start pacing ourselves and planning and organizing our lives. Stop trying to do everything. And when you can delegate, 
Delegate. Give some things to your children. It's okay for them to learn early how to cook and clean and pay bills and different things like that. That's the problem with a lot of these kids now in this generation because they weren't given any responsibilities. I gave my children responsibilities and things to do and they were mad, true enough, but it helped them in the future. So it's okay to teach your kids while they're young to allow them to do things and help you out so that you won't have so many things on your plate. So that's all I have today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I tried to make it a little bit, you know, a little funny at times just so we can get a laugh so everything won't be so serious all the time. But these are helpful tips, I think. My 10 plus one um, things I think every woman should stop doing at some point in life. So until next time, guys, I wish you all have a wonderful evening. And I will see you guys probably on the weekend. Hope you have a fabulous rest of the week. Love. Bye, guys.